Hi, I'm Suba Monik, a master program student of Concordia University. My in this video, I will show you how you can design a wide swing current meter using Cadence EDA tools. Here, I will not provide any kind of theory. If anyone is really interested to know the theory behind the circuit, they can read this book. Here you can find the a good theory of the circuit. But I'm just telling you two key points. The minimum output voltage of white swing cascade current meter is the true overdrive voltage of Q1 and Q2, which is an extra advantage over cascade current meter. And therefore, this circuitry is really useful for low power design. And one more crucial point is the WIL ratio for Q5 transistor is one by four times less than compared to other transistor. Here I'm telling you one by four, because if you will consider n equal one, then you will find the WIL ratio of Q5 transistor is one by four times less compared to other. However, for a good design, we never play with the length of the transistor. This means the length all of the transistor should be equal. We only play with the W of all of this transistor. Therefore, the W all of mean the W of the Q5 transistor should be one by four times less compared to other. Now go to cadence window and I will show you that how we can determine the accurate output voltage as well as using the parametric analysis. I will show you how we can determine the accurate W as well as length of all of this transistor and why parametric analysis is important because this is the beauty of DC parametric analysis because we can change the width and we can observe the result of this parametric analysis and as well as uh, if for a good design we can make this bias current as well as this input current uh, might be equal and my output current should be equal to my input current. Now let's go to my cadence window. In cadence, uh, I just draw the circuit and as I don't know any value, Therefore, I use V out as a variable here, as well as this four transistor, I use same W by L, and I also make their length and W as a variable. For example, whenever you will take any MOSFET, by default, it will be look like this. But as I told you, our job is to design the circuit, we to find the W by L ratio of the circuit. Therefore, I made this like a variable. Using this technique, we can design any current meter, such as cascade current meter, Wilson current meter. You can try at your own. And for this transistor, uh, as theoretically, uh, we found that book that it should be quite one by four times less, but I'm using it uh, some more or less value because this helps me to find and keep all of the transistor in saturation. And here I use, I bias equal I input current and my, VDC is 1.2 volt. Now let's begin the design.
first of all, uh, I'm taking the V out is 600 millivolt. It is an arbitrary value as well as, uh, you know, for a current meter, ideally it should have a infinite output impedance. And you know, the output impedance of CMOS circuit for current meter is related to the length. If we can increase the length, it means we are increasing the output resistance of current meter. Therefore, I choose length equals to one micrometer. So by fixing length equals to one micrometer, my first job is to determine the V out. So now I also take this W RV tree. After that, I will also play with this W or you can take it quite longer than the length. Then my W by L ratio might be one, might be, sorry, it's two. My W by L ratio is two here. So now let's say this is simulation and I want to plot the drain current of this transistor, transistor MN9. So to plot the drain current, we can go output to be plotted and just select the drain node of this transistor. And you can find that. However, one more important thing is that uh, I should do DC simulation. For this, uh, we should play with one of the parameter as I want to find this output voltage. Therefore, I want to play with this V out. And if I vary this out, this V out voltage from 0 to 1.2 volt, and if the step size is 100 millivolt, then we'll get some interesting ID characteristics curve. However, uh, to find this V out W and L, you can grow variable and you can just click copy from cell view. Then this will appear in your ADE window. Now just run this simulation. And this is the ID characteristics curve. And from this curve, uh, if you assume that this is my saturation point, or this is my saturation point, then I can see if I set the this node as around 450 millivolt, then it should be in saturation. However, as I theoretically tell you that this voltage should be slightly greater than the true overdrive voltage of this MOSFET, then let's check what is the overdrive voltage. This operating point, and from here, you can find that the VGS minus VTH. If you calculate, calculate, I'm calculating this using calculator, then I will find that The overdrive voltage of this standard is around 260 millivolt. And as I believe, this overdrive voltage should be approximately equal. You can find that this value should be approximately equal. So if I take 260 millivolt, let's say the overdrive voltage of this standard is 260 millivolt. And if I make it double, then my overdrive voltage of this two transistor should be around 500 millivolt. However, this overdrive voltage also decrease if I increase the width of this transistor. So let's check that I want to set this voltage as 450 millivolt. Let's say it is 450. And my job is to keep all of this transistor in saturation in 450 millivolt. And I I take an assumption about this V out from this IDK trust score. I mean, we can see that it is possible to keep all of the transistor in saturation in 450 millivolt. So for this, I might play with the W value. 
the width. To play with this W, we should do parametric analysis. And it is the beauty of the parametric analysis that from parametric analysis, we can find the exact W relation. If I vary it one micro to five micro, then if I take total five step, then we can find that how this circuit work. So you can see that whenever I'm increasing the W, my ID characteristics curve reaches saturation point more quickly. I mean, if here you can notice that this red color curve, it is near, in near saturation in around 600 millivolt. But on the other end, this green curve, this green color curve, I believe that is far, this green color curve, you can see that it is in saturation around 450 millivolt. Okay, let's check. If I change it to linear step, then what? Okay, there might be some problem linearly. Okay. Here we can find that this is the blue color curve for five micro and this five micro might be most suitable for 450 millivolt because this curve will reach saturation more quickly. If we increase this W value, then we might get some low voltage in this output. But it depends on the design as well as how you to play with the circuit. So just now for this, I want to show you that how we can design a current meter. So you can design your own current meter using this method, using this method. So you can see that this curve is look pretty good. And I think that in 450 millivolt, not only 450, even if some less value if I use, this circuit might be in saturation. So let's check for 400 millivolt. And check every saturation in or not. If I check this, this in saturation. This transistor also in saturation. So this is my end of my video. And you also find that the ID of this transistor mean my output current is also approximately equal to 25 microampere as far as the value of ID is around 25 microampere. In my next video, I will show you how we can find the output resistance of from this current meter, as well as I will also show you that uh, how Monte Carlo analysis helps you to find the sustainability of the circuit. That is by for now. Uh, however, the entire circuit uh, performance also depends on this current source because here I use a constant current source, but for a practical use, uh, we have to design this current source. So the overall performance of this source, uh, of this current meter also depend on this. If you like my video, also share as well as subscribe my channel. And I firmly believe that my this video really helped the beginner student. Thank you.